It's one thing in the traffic union, you have to be flexible. Things can change really quickly. Um, the days can vary a lot. Obviously, one of the big things we focused and probably one of the most important things we do as a traffic unit is we investigate THIs, SPIs, which are traffic homicides and um, serious bodily injury crashes. When we're investigating those crashes, whether there's a criminal element to it or there's not and it's just bad luck or bad driving or whatever else, it, but somebody's been killed or severely, severely injured, I think that's probably the most important where we can at least maybe give the family some closure to say, hey, this is basically what happened. And if there is able to be charges, if it is a criminal case, we can bring charges against somebody for causing that person to be harmed or killed. You're using marks on the road. You're using actual what's called crush damage on the vehicle. We're getting information off the vehicle. So like the vehicle is recording with modern vehicles, they're recording, you know, does how fast the vehicle in certain vehicles record more, certain vehicles record less. So we're actually getting data from those actual cars using videos if there's any kind of security cameras of local businesses so we can piece it together multiple different ways and put all the you're just putting all of it that you can get together because not every single crash is not going to leave you perfect skid marks or perfect this to be able to measure our marks so you look for can i get some video to see of how fast the car is going or what will the car give me itself so there's multiple things that you're putting all together and looking for in each investigation we also investigate the Durland Daily, all our hit and runs that happen in the county. If patrol can't solve them or they don't have anything and it's further follow-up needed, those all get sent to us. So that's also part of our daily thing is once we get assigned hit and runs, we'll go try and get video, try and find out who was actually driving to see if we can come up and get charges and solve the hit and run accident. So you just have to be ready to go, okay, this is put aside, keep good notes, keep what you're doing compartmentalized, and then go to it if you have. You just have to be flexible. The other thing that kind of often pops up is when you see us escorting people around or escorting different things around on motors. A lot of times if we have a fallen deputy from other agencies or even politicians, anybody that comes in, stuff will often come up last minute and we'll get requests for doing an escort. So ourselves, TPD and FSU will join us because we need all the motors and we'll go end up doing, putting a plan together and go and doing escorts. So if we're working certain speed areas or where we're having complaints, we could either be in our patrol cars running laser or radar, or we might be using our motorcycles to use laser or radar. There's places where it's more convenient to have the car, just because I have more equipment, obviously, with the car, depending on what I'm doing. The motors, a lot, if it's an escort or something traffic related in that sense, the motor's what we're gonna use. Um, it also depends sometimes on weather, if it's, super wet and rainy and it's going to be a lot more of a risk to be on the motorcycle that we try not to sit there i mean we do escorts we have rain gear and there's times you just ride through it and you have to deal with the weather but if we can well a lot of times we'll choose to take a car where you're not trying to put yourself at that extra risk because you are again on only two wheels instead of four um, it really just depends on what you're doing there's a lot of places when we're doing traffic that it's easier to hide this motorcycle one people don't realize it's a police vehicle it's a lot harder to spot this as a police vehicle. It's also a lot easier to put this. I can put this on a sidewalk. I can put this in a lot of places where I cannot put a full-size patrol car. So it enables you to do traffic and run traffic a lot easier with this motorcycle than with a patrol car. You're taking a motorcycle that weighs close to a thousand pounds and doing a lot of things with it that it's not designed nor wants to do. So it's something that you have to have a lot of perseverance for because you're going to end up dropping this motorcycle a whole bunch of times in training when you're in that training learning how to ride it and learn it do it. All that training though is then building you towards things that you see in escorts. I mean escorts are a high risk thing because we are riding at a very fast pace to get in front of whatever our package is. So we're passing that package to go get and block traffic for it so it never stops rolling. So you're riding these motorcycles at a high rate of speed while that is also one of the most fun parts of the job, it is also a very risky part of the job. So you do have a lot of training and all that training we do goes in towards how to avoid it, how, what to happen if you happen to lock up your brakes, going through tight places. I mean, there's lots of times where you're putting this motorcycle and you only have a couple inches of clearance between either cars or other stuff that you're fitting it through. And you do all that training and cone work and all that so you learn to how to do all that for real life stuff. While the cones and like the rodeo stuff that you see us do, while it is fun and is an enjoyable part of it, it's all based on and built on working towards real world situations that we run into. So you know how to be better, more proficient and safer on the motorcycle.